Hello? Oi, I'm transferring you to Hyrule. Pack your things and get moving. Well, guess I better find a good place to move to. But where? Looks like it's time to take a closer look and determine what is the very best place to live in Hyrule. But hold on just a second. What you've got to understand is that me picking a place to live is different than just subjectively picking a place based on my personal opinion. I've got to really think about my day-to-day -day needs and why living somewhere is a good, logical choice. Much like you would if you moved to a different town or city, I've got to consider things like food sources and general safety. Because I'm not some overpowered Highland warrior, I'm just a guy looking to make a living in one of the most dangerous kingdoms in the land. Also, you might be wondering what my job is, but I'll get to that later, so make sure you watch until the end. So because of my limitations as a mortal man, here's a rundown of some things I will need to consider before choosing where the best place is to move. First of all, the place I live has to be an established community. I'm talking about your Goron cities, your Kakarikos, your Zora's domains, what currently thriving community is the best to live in. And emphasis on current. I'm sure Castletown was quite the hotspot in its heyday, but now... Oh, shoot. I think he sees me. No thanks. In addition to this, I need to consider what has to happen to meet my basic needs. How will I get my water? What about food? What shops are available to me? And the last part to consider is safety. Hyrule might be beautiful, but it's dangerous. How will I keep myself safe? If I need weapons or armor, where will I get it? Are there any natural defenses surrounding the settlement? Can I rely on the other members of my town? So let's dig into the nitty gritty and see what is the best place to live for a Joe Schmo like me. When it comes to living in the established communities, I'll first have to determine what the established communities actually are. After a quick look at the map, you can see there are really nine towns total, as indicated by the symbol. All of these towns have their pros and cons, but let's start with Goron City. There's a lot to love about Goron City. It has a couple of general stores to pick up supplies, an armor shop, as well as an inn if anyone wants to visit. And as an added bonus, they've also got some nearby hot springs to soak in. The Gorons themselves are also awesome, always optimistic and very hardworking. But before I get too far ahead of myself, remember, I'm physically living in this place, and I'm just your average run-of-the-mill human. So while there's plenty of pros, let's get to the cons, as there's some major issues. There is, of course, the obvious problem. The heat. I'm not wearing flame breaker armor, I'm burning to a crisp. And I don't want to have to spend every waking moment sweating it out inside of a stuffy suit. And before you tell me I can just drink fireproof elixirs, the answer is no. I'm not chasing those frickin' lizards around every other day. So for those reasons, I'll have to cross Goron City off the list. But this next town is also pretty hot, and it's also located in a hot place. See? See what I did there? Gerudo Town is admittedly one of the coolest and coziest settlements in the entire land. The town is neatly defended by some of the strongest warriors in Hyrule, and even boasts city walls to keep intruders out. The town has market stalls that sell anything you could need, including food, weapons, and even jewelry. There's even a special armor shop if you know where to look. The town is also the only one to have a bar, or at least I can only assume it's a bar. They're suspiciously careful to not admit it. What are you hiding? But as you're listening to this, I'm sure the sound of my voice is enough to tell you what the problem is. Yeah, the whole no boys allowed thing is gonna cause a few problems for me. And much like Goron City, I don't want to be forced to wear the same clothes every day. Even though this getup looks friggin' comfortable, the paranoia of being caught would make my living situation miserable. And while the town itself is awesome, the surrounding area leaves a bit to be desired. Not to mention that one of these things could come and bite you in the butt, so it'll have to be a pass for me. But this next town might not be one you even considered. Tucked deep into the Lost Woods, the Korok Forest offers a safe, tranquil environment to live in. At least until this mofo starts shaking his mother clucking maracas! But really, I am a big fan of the woods, and the Koroks are always excited to help out, like these guys, who decided to set up shops for things you might need to buy. And this guy, put out a bed you can sleep in for free. And he'll watch you all night. Or, yeah, you know, on second thought, this place is a little freaky. Which reminds me, it's hard enough to get into this place without getting lost. How the heck am I supposed to get out without getting lost? What's that? Oh, there's a tree that will teleport you out? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, forget it. The Koroks are nuts. I'd rather take my chances being burned alive living off of elixirs. So, how about we drop into somewhere a bit less terrifying? Zora's Domain. The domain is surrounded by natural cliffs, as well as a generous amount of water that gives the community protection from invaders. The town also has a general store and inn. Its location also makes for easy access to water sources, which provides a nice backdrop to the stunning architecture. But while the architecture is stunning, it also gives off a cold, wet, stony atmosphere. I imagine living here would feel like living in a museum. 
Reaching the domain also requires a long and treacherous journey through lands inhabited by all kinds of nasty monsters. And I don't mean to sound judgy, but the local people are all fish, and I don't have to tell you what that place probably smells like. Except for you, Sidon. You probably smell like sandalwood. So perhaps it were better that we get out of the water and instead look to the skies. Rideau Village offers a crisp, mountainous getaway, tucked away in the chilly Tavantha region. There's plenty to love here, with the alpine trees, the natural water source surrounding the town, and the overall friendliness of the Rideau. It's also got an inn, a general store, and an armor shop. That's all great, but the town is cold and isolated. Just ask this guy how he feels about it. It's also, of course, built for individuals who can fly, and I'm a little worried about accidentally slipping over the edge. You can certainly get the right clothing to keep warm, I don't love the idea of living in a house that is so open to the elements or having to be constantly bundled up. So it looks like Rito Village isn't going to be my home, but the remaining four have got an almost equal shot at being my choice. But there's still just enough to separate them. So if I'm gonna select just one, we've really gotta dig into the nitty gritty and look at how well each of these towns meet my needs. The four towns are Luralin Village, Potato Village, Terrytown, and Kakariko Village. All four towns offer a general store and inn, have nearby access to a water source, and have varying levels of natural protection from invaders, although more on that later. However, Ateno, Kakariko, and Terrytown go beyond this by also having armor shops as well as specialty shops such as a jewelry store and a dye shop. So because of this, I'm gonna have to eliminate Luralin Village next. But before moving on, I gotta say that this one was tough. Generally speaking, Luralin is probably my favorite town. I love that it's off the beaten path, the unique style of the village, and just the laid back vibe of living near the ocean. I love the idea of being able to just jet off into the ocean for some needed relaxed recreation. But if I'm gonna survive and thrive in Hyrule, I've gotta live somewhere that's gonna be able to provide me with what I need. Luralin has easy access to the ocean, but the nearest freshwater source requires an arduous climb up the mountain. The entrance to the village is also through a narrow canyon, so an invading force just needs to block the canyon and seal off the bay to easily trap the inhabitants of the town. I love this village, but it looks like the only living I'll be doing there is on vacation. So let's take a close look at the remaining three towns and critique them based on the previously mentioned criteria. Let's start with the most important. How easily accessible is the water? The Taino has its own freshwater lake with a creek running through the center of town. Kakariko has a small lake surrounding Impa's house, along with a river that flows through the town. There's also a large water source nearby with the Lanayru Promenade. Terrytown is also surrounded by water, but its steep cliffs require a long trip round to actually get to the water. And while we're talking about water sources, what about food sources? Kakariko has some local farms which grow their world-famous carrots and pumpkins. They also have a chicken farm and a world-class chef in the making. Taino has some large expensive farms that can feed the whole town, as well as a cattle farm. And Terrytown has this dog. I'm kidding, we'll eat the old people first. But as far as I can tell, there's no farms, just the food you'll find in the shops. Next up, security. Hateno provides some of the best fortifications, with Fort Hateno lying at the base of the mountain. It proved its value in the Battle of Fort Hateno, although in the end it did take the cosmic powers of a certain someone to truly turn the tide. But even if an invading force breaches the fort, it's a long trek uphill to reach the village. Mount Lanayru and Ibon Mountain lie to the north and south, and the ocean to the east all provide natural barriers that can give invaders trouble. Kakariko lies at the peak of a large hill and is surrounded by large cylindrical mountains that can provide cover. The village also has multiple entrances, including a secretive escape past the Great Fairies Fountain that snakes into the Lanayu Promenade. But while the narrow entrances serve as a funnel for invading forces to be picked off, they can also be easy for the invaders to seal off, similar to Luralin Village. But Kakariko boasts a powerful defense the other two villages lack. The place is packed with some of the most ferocious and disciplined warriors in the land. An opposing army would find a well-trained and unafraid population that would not take anything lying down. I don't think I can say the same about the other two towns, unless that die master is hiding something more sinister in those pots. So what about Terrytown? At first you might say, it's safe, there's only one way in, and no one can scale the cliff sides. That may be true, but like I mentioned before, a single entrance can leave the inhabitants trapped. The nearby cliff that hosts the shrine also provides a decent overlook for archers or cannons to rain down on the village. And unless you're a Hylian warrior chosen by the gods, you're not surviving the jump into water off those cliffs. So as cool as the town is, Terrytown is eliminated. So what can separate our final two towns? What is the differentiator that makes one better than the other? Well, not much. At least not much that isn't completely subjective. But before I reveal my final pick, you might still be wondering, what is this guy's job? Why is he moving to Hyrule? Well, 
I'm a traveling filmmaker, and now that I'm going to be living in Hyrule full-time, I'm going to be making all kinds of video projects, documentaries, commercials, just about anything I can come up with. So if you have any ideas of videos you'd like to see, drop your suggestions in the comments, and I'll see what I can do. And hey, this is my first video, so if you've enjoyed it, go ahead and subscribe so I know to keep making more. So without further ado, here's my final pick. Remember my real favorite village, Lurland? That's going to be the difference maker. If I hope to one day build my vacation home there, I'm going to need to live in a place that gives me easy access. And that's a quick boat ride down the coast from Hateno. So it looks like I'll be headed to Hateno. Like I said, this was all just my opinion, but I think it'll be a great place for me to live. But feel free to tell me where you agreed or disagreed. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching, and I'll be looking for you in the next one. Talk to you then.